All right, so let's take a look at the decimal addition in the following way. We have decimal numbers in expanded notation can be thought of as having units. We have three one hundredths, two tenths, and one singleton. We can write it in the expanded form in this manner. And so when we saw your addition problem before, what did we do? We added the singletons first, then we added the tens first, then we added the hundreds. So if you add them, this is what will happen. If there were more than 10, then it forms a carryover. If there are no carryovers, then you're good to go. So if you have eight singles, two tens, eight hundreds, and so the answer would be 828. Polynomial addition will be exactly like that. You're going to add exactly like that. So instead of 10 squared, you have x squared. Instead of 10, you have x. Instead of 10 to the 0, you have just a constant term there. And so again, we're going to add like terms. So 10 squared, we have 3 plus 5 10 squares. Here we're going to have 3 plus 5 x squares. Here we have 2 plus 0 tens. Here we have 2 plus 0 x's. 1 plus 7 10 to the 0. Here we have 1 plus 7 x to the 0, which is really 1. And so the answer would be 8x squared plus 2x plus 8, versus here we had 828. Look at the similarity between this logic and this logic. Again, what was the basic principle? It was adding like units. So try adding these. All right, let's see if you can add these. Pause the video and go with your instinct. Remember what i was. i was square root negative 1 for complex numbers. So figure out how you would consider adding these. And then we'll check if that's what you got. All right, so we add like terms together. So clearly, 3 and 5 are like terms. Those are the real parts. So we add those. And 4i, 4 is the imaginary part. 7 is the imaginary part. So we add 4 and 7, the imaginary part, together. So we'll end up with 8 plus 11i, a new complex number. So the way to add is really logical. You add like terms. So like terms, what does like term mean? Real parts. Imaginary part, those are the like terms. So square root negative 1 was i. So if this is really adding radicals then. See if you can extend this uh, addition to adding these radicals then. See what you get. Pause the video here and try on your own. Don't just wait for me to tell you the answer. Go ahead. It's very, very important. Even if you get a wrong answer, there's nobody even to see whether you got it right or not. So you can go with true, honest answer and see what happens to understand how your brain works. Getting to know how your thinking process works will aid you later on very well. So what do you think we should do? OK, add like terms. So let's just circle all the like terms. So we're saying that this and this is the like term. That and that is a like term. So add them together. So square root 2 is acting like our units. We have 3 square root 2s, like 3 apples, plus 4 apples. So we have 3 square root 2s and 4 square root 2s, giving you 7 square root 2s, 5 cube root 3s, and 6 cube root 3s, giving you 11 cube root 3s. So square root 2 and cube root 3 is serving as units. Or at least that's how you can think of it. All right, try this one on your own. Go ahead and see what you can do. Now you might have started to see the pattern. All right, let's circle the like terms. So those two are like terms, and those two are like terms. So add them together. So the a to the 2 thirds and b to the 4 fifths are acting like units now. And so that would be the final answer. All right, so we're going to do some practice examples. Again, we're going to show you the problems, and then we'll discuss the answers, but we would like you to solve them on your own first if it's possible. So I will pause here and ask you to finish it and then continue watching the video. OK, again, it's a good idea to have colored pencils so you can decide 
Uh, you can underline or circle like how I'm circling, like terms, so you can add them together. Okay? So you can see how if you couldn't do counting number or whole number addition, you cannot do these problems. Their difficulty level is really the same as the difficulty level of adding whole numbers as long as you realize what the like units are and then add them together. So four of these and five of those will give you nine of a to the two-thirds. And oh, look, here we also got a nine b to the four-fifths. All right, try that one on your own. If you are not getting the right answers, please try to think why not. Just make sure you know how to add like terms. So what allows us to add 3 square root x and 6 square root x first, and then 5 square root x plus 1 and 7 square root x plus 1? Think about what property allows me to switch the order of terms like that. So when you switch these two terms together, flip them, this one will go here, this one will go here. That's commutative property because you're switching. But in order to go from these two to these two, that is the associative property of addition. So very, very important to know why you are allowed to just switch these two and just add the three and the sixes together and the five and the sevens together. Uh, the five square root x plus one and seven square root x plus ones together. It's because of the associative and commutative property of addition. All right, let's do some additional problems. What if I gave you two inches plus three quarters of an inch? Then you would say I have two and three quarter inches. Notice that when we write a mixed fraction, two and three quarter inches, that really also means that it's two plus three quarters inches, right? We write it in this manner. So sometimes we can add quantities and not be able to write a whole number, like 2 inches plus 3 inches is 5 inches. That's 5 is one number. Sometimes your answer would have to stay in the format of 2 plus whatever, that many of inches or centimeters or whatever object you're adding. So it may not be a single entity, even if they have like units. So for example, if I said add 2x plus 1s plus 7x plus 1, I'll end up with 9x plus 1s. So x plus 1 is my unit, and the 2 plus 7 added to give me 9. But what if I ended up with the following, 2x plus 1s plus ax plus 1s? Then instead of 2 plus 7, I'll have 2 plus ax plus 1s. 2 and 7 add up to 9, but 2 and a, they don't really add up because you can't add them together, so they'll just have to stay. So 2 plus a, x plus 1s. That's how you can see this. So x plus 1 was acting like our units here. So use this principle to do the following examples. Let's see what we got. So again, we want you to try these on your own before you check the answers. This is going to be a key in order to do some higher level mathematics later. So x plus 1 is the common unit. So we're going to have 8x plus 1s. Here we're going to write the same thing, except instead of the 8, we're going to have 3 plus a, x plus 1s. Nothing we can do to the 3 plus a, so it will have to stay. Here we're going to get 3 of these plus 7 of those will give me 10 of those. Last one, or second last one, I guess. What do you think? It's almost identical to this. What's the only difference between problem number 3 and problem number 4? It's what you're adding. Here we had 2x plus 1s. Here we have square root 2x plus 1s. All right, do this one. x is our unit here. So it's going to be 3 square root 2 plus 5, this many x's. All right, go ahead and do that. So we have three quantities added together, but they are all like units of a plus b, so there's this many of a plus b's. Okay, try that. So underline, use colored pencils, underline like units, and then add them. 
Did you get that? Okay. Now what? All three are different units. So do you think we can just leave it like that and say, can't add them? The answer is no, because these are all metric units. So what can we do? We need some conversion. Do you remember what one kilometer is? If not, let's just quick review. One kilometer is 1,000 meters, and one meter is 100 centimeters. So if you want to add three kilometers, that's going to be uh, 3,000 meters. Why? Because that's three of these. So 3,000 meters I can replace in place of three kilometers. Seven meters is already in meters. So two meters would be two 200 centimeters. So 200 centimeters is the same as two meters. Can you see that? And now they're all meters, so we can add them together and got 3,009 meters. So sometimes when they're not like units, you're going to have to do some conversion, create the like units, and then you can add them. Otherwise, they'll just have to stay as they are. Centimeter and centimeter square are not like units. This is the unit of a length, and this is the units of area. So they are different. So you try that one now. So what do you think you should convert everything in? This is meters, this is centimeters, so perhaps create everything in centimeters. So 400, uh, 4 meters would be 400 centimeters. And then add them together. Remember, as you are going through this, if you have any questions that are not addressed during the lectures that you're watching, write them down. Do the form eyes only column. Put your questions there so that when you go to class, you can ask them to your teacher. Now, we have not told you yet how to do f of x plus g of x. Here are the two functions. So what do you think would be the answer? You add them together. f of x is this function. g of x is that function. Add like terms. And that should be your answer. Mathematicians define a new function with the name of f plus g and it's computed by taking each of the two functions separately and adding them together. Remember now, function always needs an input. So unless the input can be valid in both the functions, it cannot be part of the new function f plus g. So the domain of the new function f plus g is all domain values of f and all domain values of g that belong to both domain of f and domain of g. It's called the intersection of the two domains. We're not going to spend too much time on this, but we thought it would be fun for you to see how you can extend definitions to all the objects you saw in the, one, in the first module. All right, so try these on your own then. We're going to do the first one for you. And then again, add like terms. All right, try that. Go ahead, add like terms. That you can do, I know, we just did that. OK, now try that. Well, the input here is x, whereas input here is a. So first you have to compute what the f of a would be. So if f of x is that function, then replace all the x's with a. So that will give you that. Let's do uh, h of a. Replace all the x's with a's, and you ended up with that. Now add like terms. So 2a and 4a will give me 6a. 4 will remain 4, and square root a will remain square root a. OK, so that would be the addition of h plus f of a. Here's your next video log.